in this video something about testing an experimental audio amplifier. I've made many audio amplifiers in the past and now I'm doing experiments with op amps as a kind of preamp but also to drive the end transistors and at first I used a 741 chip and now I've used the TL071 that's a field effect transistor input op amp and it is a kind of pin to pin replacement for the 741 of course this is this is uh, um, another technology is transistor bipolar transistor technology compared to field effect transistor and also combined with bi uh, bipolar transistor technology anyway I only want to sh show some things that you can discover and you surely will discover when you uh, develop audio amplifiers I have to say simple audio amplifiers maximum maximum 10 watt or so anyway this is the circuit that I published but I've made some adaptations this circuit was published yesterday or two days ago I don't know that exactly um, let's let's look at the circuit first in its fullness very easy to make one remark it works only properly between 12 volt and 13 volts but I've made some adaptations to that circuit I now use here in the circuit on the on the bench a 2N3055 and here I use a 2955 PMP silicon and that's NPN silicon the 2N3055 both transistors have an amplification factor of approximately 50 or 60 that's important and I've raised the value of this uh, resistor and I have bridged these two diodes with a resistor experimental uh, approximately 300 or 330 Hertz to get the, uh, the voltage drop between the end transistors a little bit under control so that the quiescent current is not so high and I've mounted here a 27 ohm resistor going to the base of the 2955 here are these two transistors MJA2955 silicon PMP amplification factor always interesting to make a note about the amplification factor and here the old school workhorse 2N3055 with an adequ adequate amplification and when you make an experimental amplifier in its first stage it's very well advised to make a kind of endless heatsink so that you don't burn out your end transistors and I've done that here and in a later uh, phase of the circuit you can uh, um, say tweak that um, uh, cooling plate heat sink to the properties of the, that specific uh, situation here are the three resistors of 1k that bridge these two diodes and I, I did a pre-test and the transistor uh, heat sinks got quite warm quite hot uh, at 40 volts with say 20 kilohertz and uh, 4 kilohertz but no thermal runaway and that's very good I tested it for approximately three quarters of an hour of course I have to do better more tests that's also uh, important when you develop audio amplifiers 
that tests such an audio amplifiers under the worst conditions. Over voltage, uh, a far too high input signal and um, well, also important to tell, let's see what happens when we add voltage to the circuit. You surely hear distortion now and that has everything to do with the working point of the end transistors here, this one and that one and also with the voltage drop parallel to these two diodes. And uh, to get that um, uh, quiescent current under control I mounted these three resistors um, to um, align in a certain way uh, that voltage drop and each uh, sorry each diode gives approximately 0 0.8 volts or 1.6 volt is a voltage drop but with that parallel resistor you can align that a little bit and you will immediately see that the quiescent current goes to a lower value. And that's important because when the transistors take a too high and quiescent current, they get too hot. Then you have a kind of class A amplifier, but of course the aim of such an amplifier is uh, that it is a class B amplifier where the um, current that the circuit draws um, is related to the input volume, the music input volume, or whatever kind of wave volume. So we go now to the higher voltages. And you can hear that the amplifier now is properly aligned. There's not much distortion. The music will start again within a few minutes or a few seconds. I always play the same music, it's copyright free. That's the reason why I use it. So you don't see distortion here. And this is one box. And this is the other box, two other boxes, and uh, of course that's important uh, to uh, uh, hook up your experimental amplifier to a loudspeaker box with the right impedance. The impedance of loudspeaker boxes is often um, noted in ohms say 4 ohms or 8 ohms or 16 ohms, but that is a relative value. It's the so-called nominal value because a loudspeaker is a frequency dependent element. It's a coil with some capacitance parallel to the windings of the coil hanging in that magnetic field. So the impedance of that um, loudspeaker will differ according to the frequency with which it is driven. Uh, of course this is a very bad sound, far too much. Um, energy is driven into the end uh, transistors, so we have distortion, and distortion is always visible by clipping. So the sine waves change into kind of square wave, and that's also an important thing when you make experimental audio amplifiers. I want to show that when the music starts again, the clipping. Uh, 
find the whole circuit too much, uh, too good. But when we have a very, very strong signal, you will see that the sine wave change into square, kind of square waves. The top of the sine wave is clipped, becomes flat, and that has always uh, a very bad, gives always a very bad sound, distortion. Uh, more tips when you want to do these experiments. Always use a fuse in the power supply lead. I have here my homebrew uh, power supply and I can set here with this knob a series uh, resistor in the power supply lead. And now it's 2 ohms. That means that the current cannot rise to a destructive value. And for more uh, sensitive circuits I use of course a series resistor of 5 ohms, 18 ohms, 100 ohms, etc. But you see of course here that the voltage drops when the series resistor is too high. Anyway, back to 2 ohms and here it is 0 ohm is not advised as a series uh, resistor. That limits the current and um, makes such a circuit, um, pre protects such an experimental circuit. That's always advised and furthermore it's also always advised when you do experiments to slowly raise the voltage to your experimental circuit. So slowly raise the voltage. Now it's zero. Slowly raise it. Look at the amperimeter. Sorry for this endless music. Look at the amperimeter. When the circuit takes a too high current, uh, switch the power supply off. That's also important. Well, um, also important, bridge your circuit, your experimental circuit, audio circuit, with a good quality electrolytic capacitor. Uh, that saves you a lot of problems, uh, oscillations, etc., etc. So this is a capacitor that I recently bought, 63 volts, always take a, a good over voltage. When you use a circuit on 30 volts, use for instance a, um, a 60 volt capacitor. And also important, align the input level with a potentiometer. Because a too high input uh, level to your uh, experimental audio amplifier will also cause distortion. So that's very important. And use a series resistor here to protect any source, this for instance, or an iPhone or another phone, uh, to protect that such a circuit is shortcut. It is never completely sure that an iPhone or another smartphone can deliver uh, a signal to an, an experimental audio amplifier uh, without damage. So a series resistor is important. I've used here 100 ohms, you can also use 1000 ohms anyway. And here the end capacitor. Sometimes uh, an amplifier will start to oscillate on uh, long wires, long loudspeaker wires. And in that case you can connect here a resistor of 100 ohms or 22 ohms to ground from the loudspeaker to ground. Of course that limits a little bit the output level, but anyway it's better than that the circuit starts to oscillate. <laughs>